Well, Professor Clements with you as again we consider material in section 7 of chapter 27 of OpenStax College Physics. Um, thin film interference, actually this might be uh, probably section 7 or close to it. Uh, flip through the pages, look through your PDF file. So thin film interference here for a soap bubble. And let's suppose that the uh, thin film of the soap bubble is a little higher index refraction than water. Let's say 1.34. It's soapy water, not pure water. And there's air inside the bubble. We have green light that is uh, really sticking out, uh, especially bright, to a person who's viewing the bubble. So we have white light coming in, but it's, uh, the green is really bright as this person looks at with their eye. So what's happening here, we have constructive interference for the green light. It's the best. And we have less constructive interference for the other colors. Um, so we're going to concentrate just on this 500 nanometer uh, light. So if we look at the rays here, ray 1, ray 2, air is, of course, 1.0 for its index of refraction. And our material in the bubble here, 1.34 for its index of refraction. Ray 1, it's bouncing off a higher index of refraction. So, yes, there is a half wavelength phase shift at reflection for ray 1. Is there a half wavelength phase shift for ray 2 as it bounces off the inside edge of this uh, thin film, the soap bubble? And the answer is no. Half wavelength shift reflection for ray number 2. We're in a high index refraction material 1.34, bouncing off an interface to a low index refraction material. There's no half wavelength phase shift when that occurs. We need constructive interference. By virtue of the reflection, we're half wavelength out of phase. How do we restore the beams to be in phase? Well, what we need is half of a wavelength, and again, it'll be a different wavelength than the, uh, the soapy water material. We need half a wavelength of total path inside the material. That means we need a thickness of one quarter of this wavelength in the material. That will, you know, a quarter wavelength down, a quarter wavelength back up, and we have a half wavelength of phase change due to the path length. That will compensate for the half wavelength of phase shift for one of the reflections. So we need to know what the lambda prime is. Um, the lambda prime is the wavelength in air divided by n. As light gets into the soapy water here, its speed decreases. The frequency is constant. The speed is less. The wavelength has to be reduced. The frequency is constant. So it drops down by this uh, index refraction number. And we have uh, 500 nanometers is the wavelength in air. We have 1.34 for the index of refraction. So this lambda prime, you should do this on your own calculator. I came up with 373.1 nanometers for lambda prime. The thickness is 1 quarter lambda prime. So 1 quarter of 373.1 nanometers. And I uh, calculated 93.3 nanometers. That would be the thickness of our uh, soap bubble, of the thin film of the soap bubble, that would cause a condition of green light having constructive interference. Again, there is a half wavelength phase shift at the first uh, reflection. No half wavelength phase shift here. That puts the two beams out of phase by half a wavelength. We want in phase for the two beams. To get the light back in phase, we needed another half wavelength 
of phase shift due to this path length. Half wavelength total, we need a quarter wavelength down, a quarter wavelength back up. Uh, we need to use the wavelength in the soapy film. We calculated that to 373.1 nanometers, and we have our, our thickness. So part B here, will any colors in the visible spectrum be missing? We just did constructive interference. Will there be some destructive interference? Well, we're already, we're out of phase, you know, the reflections. We have half wavelength out of phase due to one reflection shifting, the other not shifting half a wavelength. So what do we need for the total path in the uh, soapy water such that we would maintain this half wavelength out of phase condition? Hopefully you're saying we need one full wavelength of path in the material. So we need a, uh, uh, a situation here of our lambda that uh, our lambda prime, we'll find lambda in the air later, but our lambda prime would need to be uh, such that we have one wavelength of path in the soapy water. We already know what the thickness is. It's 93.3. So this one lambda prime, that would be the total path. The total path is down and up. So I just multiplied the thickness by 2. So our lambda prime would have a value of 186.6 nanometers. And again, our lambda prime is lambda in air divided by index refraction. So the wavelength in air would be n times lambda prime. For our situation here, the index of refraction is 1.34 for the soapy water. Our lambda prime, 186.6 nanometers. And I'm finding a wavelength in air of 250 nanometers. And that's in the ultraviolet. So no, we will not have a color in the visible spectrum that would be totally missing from this soap bubble. Um, well, you might think, well, what if the wave is making uh, two wavelengths in the uh, in the soapy water? Now, if you just observe here, if, if lambda, if the wavelength is such that two wavelengths fit into the total path down and up, then I'd have two lambda prime equals two times 93.3, and we end up with the uh, the wavelength of half of what we have here. Work it out in detail if. Uh, you don't draw the same conclusion right off the bat. So the answer is no. No color has destructive interference in the visible spectrum. And then perhaps you can remember, looking at a soap bubble, the color kind of shimmers. Why is it that the pattern of color moves around as you look at the soap bubble? Well, you should be thinking to yourself, the soap bubble might be changing thickness. It's, after all, soapy water. It's a liquid. It can move around as air currents push on the, uh, on the soap bubble. And what we have here is a situation where the thickness is changing. The soap bubble is also evaporating. So the thickness of the thin film is changing. that causes a different wavelength in the soap bubble to meet the condition of giving us a uh, uh, constructive interference. The thickness is changing. It's going to lead to a different lambda prime, which leads to a different wavelength in air. So it's because the thickness of the soap bubble is changing that causes us to see different colors bright in different spots on the bubble. Uh, this analysis uh, simplifies things just a little bit. We're not going to worry about that we have a slanted line here. We're going to pretend we're going straight down and straight up. Usually the angles are small enough that we can make that approximation. So don't worry about that. Uh, it's good that you thought of that question. If you didn't think of it, don't worry about it. We're not going to consider it. But the uh, thickness of the soap film is changing. That causes different colors to be seen. Ask your instructor some questions.